Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I am your instructor, Richard Rost. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to use the After Update event and the DLOOKUP function to look up and auto-populate fields in a form. Today's question comes from Chris, one of my gold members. Chris asks, I assign zone numbers to customers based on the state the customer is in. However, this isn't a rule. There may be exceptions, such as if a sales rep brings in a new customer from out of his zone. Is there a way to automatically fill in the default zone for the customer when I enter his state, but still be able to change it? And Chris's email explains further that zones have different components to them. Like a zone might have a, a particular shipping rate, a particular sales rep. So they use a zone to track all that information. Now the problem Chris is running into is that he stores the zone number in the customer table, which he should, but every time he types in a new customer, he has to go and manually look up what the zone is for, let's say New York, and then type it in himself. He wants to know if Access can do that for him. You can't just do it with a relationship because if you relate New York to the zone, then you can't change it for each customer. So you need a way for Access to look that value up when you type in the state and fill it into the customer table. So here I have my basic customer template. All right, here's a customer's form. And you can see here I got the address. We're gonna have to add a zone number to this form first. So let's add it to the table. Let's go to customer T, design view. Down here, we'll put in a zone. And that's a number. Okay, long integer is fine. Close that, save changes, sure. Now we'll need another table to look up that zone number. So let's create table design. Now I can't use zone number as an auto number because each zone might be assigned to multiple states. But I do like to have that auto number for each table. So I'm going to put in here state zone ID. That'll be my auto number. Yes, I recommend an auto number for each table. Why? I'll put a link to a video below in the description. Watch that video. People question me all the time. Are auto numbers really necessary? Yeah, I, I kind of think they are. I've been building databases with Access for 26 years now, and I pretty much always use an auto number, with very few exceptions. Next, we'll type in a state, and that'll be short text. And this particular business only does business in the United States. So this can I can get away here with making that two. But if you want to leave that bigger because you do business in other countries, that's up to you. This particular database, the state size only has to be two. And I'm also going to index that no duplicates because I don't want New York listed in here twice, for example. I want to look up the state and it will bring back a zone. So the zone is a number. All right, save this. This will be my state zone T, T for table. Auto number, yep, primary key. And now I can fill in some data. All right, let's go to data sheet view. I'll just put a couple in. All right, let's say New York is zone one. So is Pennsylvania. All right, so is Maine. All right, Florida is zone two, along with South Carolina and Georgia. All right, and we'll do California is zone three by itself. And then one more, maybe Texas is zone four. Okay, there's my zones. So a new customer comes in from New York, the system will look up zone one and put that in the customer table in that zone field. All right, and I couldn't just relate this to the state field in here because again, you can't change it then. Not everybody from New York will be in zone one. It's just a default value. All right, so how do we get that in the customer form? Well, let's first put the zone in the customer form. Right click, design view. Let's put a text box up here to have the zone in it. You can go up to add existing fields if you want and find the zone field. Click and drag and drop it right there. Slide it over here. Maybe move the label up next to it. All right, save changes, control S, and we'll close that and then reopen it. Okay, so we've got a zone here. Now this zone field has no data in it. So if you want to, you can open up the customer T and you can come in here and you can put zones in. I'll just leave them blank for now. But what I want to happen is when I type in a new state down here, I want it to go out to the table, the state zone T that we created, look up the zone based on that state and then put a value in here. How do I do that? 
Well, I'm going to use something called an after update event. After update says when I change the value, when I update the value in a particular field, like a text box, do some stuff. What is that stuff? Well, it could be either a macro or some VBA programming. I personally prefer VBA programming. It's not that hard once you get the hang of it. And I'm going to show you exactly what you need to know. All right, so right click, design view. Let's find the field that we want to put the event in. There it is right there. So you say zip, we want state. Double click on it. That brings up the property sheet. On the event tab, find after update right there. Okay. Hit the dot, dot, dot button over here. That's the builder button. It's going to ask you, choose builder. Which builder do you want? We want the code builder. We don't want macros or expressions. We want the code builder. That opens up the visual basic window. This guy. Now I've got some other code in here from previous lessons. These are open forms, open different forms inside of buttons. But this is what we want right here. State after update. This is the event that runs after I change the state field. Let's put something simple in there. For example, let's just put in here message box. Hello world. All right. Your typical first programming something. Message box just throws up a box on the screen with a message in it and it'll put up hello world. All right. Save that. Close the Visual Basic Editor. Let's close the form and reopen it. Now come in here and let's change Florida to Pennsylvania. As soon as I hit tab, look at that. Hello world runs because I changed that field, that value, and then the after update event ran. All right, it runs whenever you change a particular field. Now message box just says hello world. You hit okay and you're right back editing data in the form. Now, I don't want it to say hello world. I want it to look up that zone. So we have to use a particular function called DLOOKUP. So let's go back to design view. Let's go down to the state field again, bring up its properties, go back into the after update dot dot dot. Now it puts you right in here. Now, instead of message box, we're going to use the DLOOKUP function. We're going to say zone equals D lookup. Now D lookup takes three bits of information all inside of quotes. The first thing is what is the field that you're looking up? Well, I'm looking up the zone field, the domain. The second thing is what table or query are you looking up this data in? Well, it's state zone T. You can see it right over there on the navigation pane. All right, comma. What is the criteria? In other words, it's a where condition. So here I'm going to say where the state equals. Now here's the tricky part. This has to be inside of quotes. So it's got to be single quote, double quotes, ampersand, state, ampersand, double quote, single quote, double quote. I know it's confusing. I have a separate lesson on string concatenation. That's what this is. When you put two strings together, go watch that video. If this is confusing to you. Don't feel bad. It confuses a lot of people. This is one of the things that I get asked all the time. That's why I made a separate video on it. Basically, if you take a look at it, okay, you need to say state equals New York like that. Okay. So state is a field on the current form. It's also a field in that table. So it's the same thing, but it's two different fields. Okay. But state equals New York. The New York has to be inside of quotes because it is a string itself. But that whole thing has to be inside of quotes and you can't just do this. Okay. Because this in turn would close that string there. You see, it's, it's confusing. So what you have to do is you have to make these single quotes that are inside of double quotes, or you can make them double, double quotes. I explain all of this in the concatenation video. All right. And then we taken this out of the middle and making this part here, a field on the form. So yeah, string concatenation is kind of crazy. Watch that other video. All right. It's 20 minutes long and it explains string concatenation in a lot more detail. You kind of have to know it to work with the lookup and after update, unless you're just using IDs in your lookup, then you don't have to bother with that. Anyways, what this says is look up the zone in the state zone table where the state equals whatever the state is on the current form. Okay. And it sets it in the zone field. All right. A little confusing. I get it. This makes more sense after you've done it a couple times. All right. So let's close this. Let's close this guy, save it, open it back up again. And now let's put me back in Florida. Boom. And look at that. I'm in zone two. See that the after update event ran. It looked up Florida. 
in my state zone table right there. It found the state and it brought back the zone field and it put it right there. If you're familiar with Microsoft Excel, this is very similar to the VLOOKUP or the new X lookup function. I have videos on those too. Watch those. It'll give you a better understanding of what DLOOKUP does. D stands for domain. In Excel, you got VLOOKUP, which the V stands for vertical, and there's HLOOKUP, which looks up horizontally. Then they made up an X lookup function, which is new, just came out this year, and it looks up all kinds of different crazy stuff. All right, they just probably picked X because it was cool. But DLOOKUP stands for domain. Now a domain in Microsoft Access can be either a table, a query, all kinds of stuff. So that's why it's DLOOKUP. But I'll put links to those uh, XLOOKUP and VLOOKUP Excel videos down below too. Those are pretty good. Watch those if this seems confusing at all. In fact, I have another video that also uses lookups. Uh, it's a zip code lookup video. I'll put a link to that down below as well. That'll show you how to look up a zip code. You enter the zip code and it pulls back the city and state. Same basic concept as this. All right, ready for another one? All right. Now yeah, the captain's from Riverside, Iowa. That's okay. Now he's going to be from Texas. Boom, zone four. Okay. This guy's from New York. Boom, zone one. And that's how the after update event works. Now, what happens if you type in a state that's not in there? What if I type in, let's say, Washington? All right, well, it goes to null. Wouldn't you like it if the code could give the user a warning message that says, hey, the state wasn't found. Would you like to enter it now? We'll cover that in the extended cut members edition. Okay, the members only extended cut edition covers prompting for that state. If you type in a state like Ohio and it doesn't exist, Access will prompt you to enter it. It says Ohio is not found in the zone table. Please enter a zone. Type in a number, then we'll save it to that zone table. So the next time you go and do a lookup, it's just in there. We'll talk about a whole different bunch of concepts, including input box, the NZ function, converting to integers, the isNumeric function, and I'll show you some SQL to add that record into your table. All right, here we are. I type in Ohio, tab. It says Ohio is not found in the zone table. Please enter a zone. All right, I'll give it 14. And then it puts the 14 in here, and it saves it in my zone table right down there, 14. And we'll go over some different stuff in case your users try to get funny. So if they type in something like, um, let's say they put in a, like Tennessee, okay? If they hit cancel, it just leaves it, all right? Or if they try to put in something like garbage like that, it will yell at them and say, zone must be numeric. All right, so we'll talk about some of those different things. Lots of new little nuggets for my members in this extended cut video. How do you become a member? Well, you click on that join button down below the video on my YouTube page. Silver members and up get access to my extended cut tech help, plus live video, chat sessions, and lots of other perks. Click on the join button and you'll see a list of all the different options and the perks that each level gets. But don't worry, my tech help videos are free and they will always be free. I love bringing these videos to you on YouTube. Make sure you subscribe to my channel. Again, that's absolutely free to subscribe. You'll get notifications if you click the little bell icon whenever I release a new video. Also, feel free to stop by my website and check out my access forum. And make sure you check down below the video. Click on that show more link. I know a lot of people mentioned to me that they didn't have any idea this was down there. Um, YouTube does a pretty good job of hiding it. Um, if you click on that show more link, It'll bring you to a whole bunch of other resources that I have. I've got uh, related lessons. For example, in this lesson, I talk about um, concatenation. I've got other videos on concatenation, XLOOKUP, VLOOKUP. I'll put links all down below the video there that you can follow to watch to learn more about the topics from today's class. One of those links will be for my Access Level 1 class. It's a free three-hour long tutorial that covers all the basics about Microsoft Access. So if you have any questions, uh, they're usually covered in that as far as the beginner stuff goes. And if you like level one, level two is just $1. That's another full hour long class. If you've got questions you want to see answered in a video like this, visit my tech help page. There's all my other cool stuff, Facebook, Twitter, my blog. All right, that's it for today. I hope you learned something. We'll see you next time.